Commissioners, you should have uh, received an email earlier this afternoon that had the uh, treasurer's report attached. Um, I'm still running into an error as it relates to the sewer fund, which is why I don't have those uh, reports for you just yet. I'm tracking down that error. I haven't been able to pinpoint it just yet. The error is purely a technical accounting error. It doesn't relate to any kind of uh, missing assets or anything to that effect. I just uh, <laughs> can't get my numbers to jive, so I want to present you with uh, factual information. Until I can do that, I, I don't feel comfortable circulating that particular report, but I can speak to some of the uh, important matters that are contained in that report. But we'll start with the, with the general fund. <coughs> um, so as you can see uh, on the, uh, the revenue line item, property taxes have begun to flow into the city. If you remember last month, we were approximately $4 million in collections. And as of right, uh, as of the end of January, we collected approximately $2.7 million in property taxes. If you remember from uh, my presentation last Thursday, that's to be expected. January is a large collection month for us. Uh, you'll see more collections flowing um, in, I'm sorry, December is a large collection month for us. And you'll see more collections flowing in, in January and February as people uh, strive to, to meet that obligation. Um, that's really the, the largest uh, change in the general fund from last month to this month. Um, what you might notice is uh, that increase in uh, property tax has substantially increased our fund balance. So last year, uh, excuse me, last month I said it was around 7.5 million. It's now at approximately 9.2 uh, 9 million. Uh, I would stress that that fund balance will be spent over time. Um, so it's much more. Um, that $9.2 million number is a reflection in time and not an accurate representation of the amount of money that we have in the fund balance. That number remains close to about $7.3 million. Um, in regards to the expenditures, there's nothing really to uh, report that seems out of the ordinary. We are, um, you know, most of these accounts. Um, as it relates to expenditures are within about 50% of collections, which you would expect to see at this particular point of the year. It's uh, essentially the halfway point, and we've essentially spent uh, half the money that we allocated for most of these expenditures. The exception, of course, is um, this public safety line item that still remains at zero, um, but outside of that, and capital projects, which we will uh, eventually use as well. But outside of those two anomalies, um, right around 50% in terms of expenditures, which makes sense for this particular portion of the year. In terms of changes to fund balance, I, I again just want to stress this. If you look at the very uh, bottom line, it says net change in fund balance of uh, 1 million, uh, a positive 1 million 27,000. Again, that number is based on a period in time, uh, excuse me, a point in time, 
and is not necessarily indicative of where we anticipate ending up at the end of the year, that number you'll see in the budgeted column uh, with, where we still anticipate to have a negative $1.5 million impact to the fund balance. Um, the checking account, we have about $9 million in the bank, um, so we are fairly liquid. <coughs> I don't expect that number to... Not, sorry, nine million. Nine million. <laughs> so yes, we are uh, uh, fairly liquid. I don't foresee um, in the near future any large expenditures that may dramatically impact the, that line item. But of course, the situation is fluid. So that, that, that number may change, but as of right now, or at least as of the 31st of January, it was $9 million. If you scroll to the tax revenue uh, page, you'll see a breakdown of tax revenue as it's collected by the city. There's a uh, actual 2017 column. There's an actual 2018 column. There's a uh, prior year to date, which just shows you what we had done up until this point last year. And then, of course, our current year to date column as well. And you'll see we're, we're pretty much in line in, in terms of our collections. Uh, oops, sorry, I minimize it. We're pretty much in line with our connect, uh, collections with the, um, you know, we're a little off in terms of property tax collections. Again, I'm not necessarily worried about that, and I don't think that's an indictment of um, the ability to, to collect those revenues. I think it's just simply a, a timing mechanism. Um, once March rolls around, that'll probably give us more clarity in regards to with uh, in regards to what that number actually is. Um, again, not a lot of information to to be gleaned from this page. We are where I think we should be at this point in the year. There's a capital projects tab uh, page rather that shows the amount that we have uh, spent until this point on certain capital projects. You'll see that most of that uh, year-to-date column is relatively minimal as compared to the budget. So I would expect um, some large expenditures to be uh, spent on some of these projects in the, in the very near future. I, I don't know that that's two months necessarily, but I would anticipate um, prior to the end of the year. And uh, we, we will definitely have some conversations about that when uh, budget season rolls around, or well, in budget season, but when we uh, have budget discussions. So this, uh, this pie chart on not a page number, but it's a big pie chart in the, the general fund. You'll see that our property taxes account for approximately 63% of our revenue. Um, it's the main driver of our revenue. It is a significant portion of uh, all the revenue that we generate for the city. I'm going to spare everybody the details on the State Street Aid Fund. That's a very small fund. There's not a lot of movement. Um, in that fund, with the exception of the fact that, uh, if you remember last month, I spoke about a, a, a negative balance in a certain account, and that was due to a transfer that hadn't happened yet. If you look at the um, transfer in line item on the uh, statement of revenues and expenses on the State Street Aid Fund, you'll see that $670,000 transfer in, which means the general fund just put money into the State Street Aid Fund in order to fund that fund. That was always the intention. There was nothing. Um, strange or atypical about that. It was just a time mechanism as to why that number was negative prior to today or prior to the 31st of January. Um, the debt service fund, there's, there's nothing necessarily uh, important to share about that fund, although I'm happy to take any questions about any of these funds that you may have. And the same thing with the stormwater fund. Again, most of these funds are relatively small. Um, there's not a lot of activity in them, uh, but the, the, <coughs> I wouldn't expect, uh, from seeing these numbers, I don't expect any strange activity or anything on tour to, be, to happen. Um, I think they're functioning appropriately as of the 31st of January. And then the solid waste fund, um, <coughs> again, very minimal fund, uh, not a lot of activity happening in that particular fund either. The, um, the bigger fund that uh, I, I'm still having trouble uh, reconciling my schedules is the uh, sewer fund. Uh, obviously, we have about 
if I remember correctly, one uh, one point two million dollars in the bank uh, in the sewer fund. We have approximately ten million dollars in fund balance in that sewer fund. We are anticipating some significant expenditures uh, to happen in the sewer fund in, in the very very near future, um, and so I would anticipate that uh, we would have some conversations as a staff about what that uh, what those expenses look like, whether it's a, some sort of financing mechanism or whether it's uh, some use of fund balance or some combination thereof. <laughs> Obviously, uh, the board has a purview to direct us in whatever um, direction they feel is appropriate, and we will make our decision um, functional as you guys uh, uh, decide. So with that, um, that concludes the treasury reports, and I'll, I'll take any questions you may have. Nice to see you again. In fact, only yesterday we were here, but uh, good to see you. Um, I have a few uh, slides I'd like to run through to kind of keep myself uh, organized and, and hopefully be a benefit to those in attendance as well. A few announcements I'd like to highlight. Um, 
and I appreciate uh, the current uh, support on this uh, uh, announcement as far as we had our public works crews out on the corridors of uh, Highway 70 and Highway 64 really on a, a nasty Friday, rainy day, um, collected about 121 uh, bags of, uh, of trash and debris that was along the roadways and uh, really want to give them some kudos and, and thanks for uh, helping keep Lakeland beautiful. Um, as my wife and I were talking the other evening, I think she had a, a pretty neat idea. Um, and I would encourage uh, all of our residents to, if they're not doing this already, to take that challenge as, as we're walking around our community um, as you're walking your dog or you're just walking for exercise just take a take a bag with you um, as you as you walk past a piece of trash on, on your route um, pick it up and I think that that we all want to live in a community that's free of litter and debris um, so I would encourage and, and challenge all of us uh, as we seek to get exercise uh, to also look down and, uh, and pick up some, some debris, some trash as you're doing so, obviously safe, safely. Um, we cer certainly wouldn't want you to take any, any risk from, from a traffic standpoint. But um, so I just want to highlight uh, our public work crews uh, that do a great job uh, in servicing the city of Lakeland. Also want to highlight a few announcements coming up. As you all know, we are transitioning to a new uh, vendor for trash uh, collection services, uh, recycling uh, collection services. So that transition is going to happen really the last two weeks of March. So the last two weeks of March, um, Republic will be um, picking up the existing containers that you have. Um, during that, <clears throat> excuse me, during that same time, our new provider, Team Waste, will be distributing um, new containers and I'll show you what those are going to look like here in a second. <clears throat> so that two-week period, um, certainly appreciate your patience as we make this transition from, from Republic uh, to Team Waste and we're certainly excited to have them on board and uh, I, I, think, uh, I think it's going to be a good transition and we certainly are, are looking forward to having some some nice looking carts with uh, our wonderful uh, City of Lakeland logo uh, on the side of them, so we're, we're anxiously awaiting that. So then Monday, April 1st is when Team Waste will officially uh, start their trash service with, with brand new uh, trucks that uh, aren't, aren't spewing hydraulic fluid on our streets, uh, which is always a, a positive thing, so we're looking forward to that. So, um, also want to highlight, uh, in, in our Tuesday meeting, there was some discussion about bulk waste pickup. So I always want, with a group this size, um, to, to just reinforce this service that we provide our residents. <coughs> so I think it's pretty neat and, uh, and it's something that I hope all of you take advantage of. So we have a bulk waste pickup. So if you have large items, less than 10 cubic yards, you simply call the city of Lakeland, schedule um, schedule pickup on your curbside, um, and we, we, we do that at no charge. Obviously, if it's more than 10 yards, uh, there's a $5 per cubic yard charge associated with that, and then there's a fee for appliances that are essentially, you know, we get charged uh, for disposal of those, so it's just simply a, a pass-through for, for us, so we have a fee associated with that. But this is, a, again, a, a service that we provide and have been providing. I just want to remind residents about it. It's, if more information is available on our website, I would encourage you to explore that further. <laughs> Currently, we're seeking uh, uh, survey responses for uh, our LAMP concert series. So you can find this survey uh, on our website as well. It's a very simple survey about, uh, is there 10 questions? Um, so it shouldn't take you long to complete the survey. This is one of those things, as we all know, it's, it's um, something we all look forward to. Those, those uh, concert series starts in, in June and runs through uh, September on Saturday. Uh, so we certainly would want your feedback. Um, just a neat opportunity for us to all get together as a community and, and just relax and enjoy good music. So please take the time to provide uh, that important feedback to our staff. And then I also want to 
announce and, and introduce our new city attorney, uh, Mr. Mike Marshall, who's with us this evening uh, from the firm Evans Feature. We certainly uh, uh, welcome you and, and uh, appreciate you being on board. So, I want to show you kind of what the uh, new, con new trash uh, containers will look like. Uh, so to the left will be kind of a grayish um, container with a gray or black lid. That will be for uh, essentially the solid waste piece, the trash. Uh, the City of Lakeland uh, logo will be again on both sides of the container. The blue will be the traditional recycling container. And uh, we are also going to put uh, on the lid, just a, as a reminder, you know, what that container is for. Um, you know, sometimes it, uh, you get in a hurry, you kind of get it set out, and you put trash in a recycling container or in a yard waste container. So we're trying to simplify this as much as we can. So then all the way to the right would be our yard waste um, container, which is a, is a brown, brownish colored container. So we think they're, I mean, these are obviously trash containers, but we think they're pretty, uh, pretty nice looking. Um, we think it'll, uh, from a uniformity standpoint, it'll be nice to have uh, uniformity uh, as we drive around the city so we don't have uh, three different or four different different containers that are sitting out. Uh, we will be consistent. Um, we will continue to market the, the city of Lakeland with our, with our logo. And uh, so we're pretty pleased to see uh, these show up here toward the end of March. Also was asked to look into a property tax freeze program. So up front, I have some information for anyone that's interested, uh, but I also want to just highlight a few things for you. This is something that the city of Lakeland adopted by ordinance back in uh, December, or I'm sorry, August of 2012. Um, so this is a state law that uh, communities can, um, can adopt ordinances to, to, to uh, accept this property tax freeze program. So in order to qualify for the tax freeze, uh, these are the uh, uh, requirements, 65 or older, you need to own or, own or live in a home in Lakeland that is your primary residence, the total household income of both the applicant and the spouse needs to be less than that number, 39,250. Um, the income requirement is statutorily set, the city of Lakeland has no um, avenue to change that number. That is set by the Comptroller of the Treasury and adjusted on an annual basis. So there's an annual application that needs to be submitted to Shelby County, uh, no later for this year, no later than April 5th of this year. So essentially that, if you're approved, if your application is approved, it would freeze your 2019 taxes based on the property tax amount for 2018. So that's a quick rundown of the process. There's a lot of supporting materials, and I will, I will put this presentation on our homepage of our website in the morning as well, so you can check out these. Uh, that the top one is the City of Lakeland's website. Um, we have a lot of good information and a lot of good um, uh, connections to get you where you need to go as far as the application. Shelby County Trustees website that talks specifically about the tax freeze. The Comptroller's website. Uh, that provides this information as well. And then the last item is the actual statutory ruling. So I have those public, I have the ruling, I have the publication, um, as well as a brochure that Shelby County has put together that really simplifies what you need to do to qualify for this property tax freeze program. And then I just, I grabbed this uh, chart or this, uh, uh, obviously the state of Tennessee uh, off the comptroller's website. And it's, I know you're not gonna be able to read this, but obviously Shelby County all the way down to the left is, it shows the rate currently for tax year 2019 at 39,250. So every, every county is, is different. And if you're interested in this data, obviously again, this presentation will be on the website and uh, you can get it on the comptroller site as well. I just thought it was, it was good data. And that's my presentation. Any questions from the board and commissioners? Uh, again, I have copies of, of this information up front, so feel free to come, uh, come grab a copy of this after the meeting. Yeah, the length concerts, you know, is it four this year, five? It's actually five, five. yeah, five concerts, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shane.
Thank you, Senator. And Mr. Marshall, welcome. Thank you very much. All right, and now we'll move on, <coughs> excuse me, to the commissioner's reports from the other boards. Um, ours was pretty simple from the last one, Kensington Manor, which we're approving, I think it's the last one tonight, correct? For phase one. Um, so that's just one phase of five for Kensington Manor. Uh, a lot more is forthcoming as far as the design. Um, basically, what you see across the Creekside Manor, that's Kensington Manor. Um, so you'll see the entrance, the first layer of streets down. And most of the clearing is done. I, I, I asked for clarification from the developer about that. He said it was. So it's just a few, maybe a few fallen trees, then you can be cleaned up. But it's the, the knocking down is done. That's why I was making sure, because I, I don't even want to knock it down. Um, so it, it looks pretty good. The plans look good. I think those will be starting in March or April as far as the slabs. So looking forward to see that happening. Fantastic news for sure. And Michelle, for and I was in here in a BOC meeting on Tuesday when the parks meeting took place. Would you like to give an update, Kevin?
that with all of them. You can uh, see what the revenue is for the senior center and how much we spend as well on those models. <coughs>
that has been absolutely terrible for all of us. It bankrupted my daddy's business with lawyer's fees, with putting this person in to rehab facility time and time and time again. And so, you know, every word and phrase that comes out of my mouth is going to be twisted. So I, I'm sure I'm going to see rebuttal. But I am here to stand before you and the public and tell this story because no one knows what it would be like if you had to deal with that. Now, what I want you to know is that you have not embarrassed me. You have not discredited me. I have great, strong character, and I was chosen for this position for a reason. And I will take whatever fallout is dealt me, but you all now know part of the reason that these things happened. <coughs> There's so much more in between that it would curl your hair, I promise. But when I was warned that someone had this information before I even decided to run by someone who was trying to do me a favor to let me know that this was out, it didn't bother me. It didn't prevent me from running, and it didn't deter me from doing what I needed to do for this city. So if anything has proven this is proven is that I am a very financially savvy person to be able to have one income, deal with my family, oh yes, pay my bills, and someone else's. So thank you for this opportunity to speak. And if any of you plan on coming up here and asking me any further questions about this, I'm going to draw the line. This is the end. I will say nothing more about this. And I, I have spoken my piece, and you will all go out of this building today believing what you choose to believe, and that's fine. But we've been through it, people, and we need to think about people who go through hard times and what they will do to help their family. Thank you.
go to Arlington High School? Because we have to pay for it, right? <clears throat> Don't we? We pay Arlington High School so our kids can go there whether we want to or not. We're all paying for it. <coughs> so I want to know if we put our money towards our own city, <coughs> why can't that be okay? Because we're paying anyway, whether you go to a private school or whatever. It seems like I would just like to know those numbers. I don't even know if they're publicly there. But I just am looking at a comparison of what is logical. Because I'm not against the school if for any reason I don't see. I don't see a reason not to complete it all. So that's all I have to say. No. Thank you, Allison. And, and I'll, I'll make an attempt to just kind of high level. Uh, you wouldn't have seen a tax increase over the last year because it was actually raised 55 cents in 2015. <coughs> if I'm correct. Is that right? 2015, it went up 55 cents. So, okay. Uh, you wouldn't have seen anything in the past year. So that's what it was that we were done for that purpose. All right. Uh, next will be Jay Dory. Name and address for the record, please. Where do I start? Been here since the beginning. Sometimes we have been running for school board. A lot of people show up when they have an opinion. They don't care about anybody else. They just show up when they have an opinion. Then they stand on this little monitor and they say, I'm from North Brunswick. I'm from North Lake. People inside of this, the Mexicans. That's the most embarrassing thing. I'm actually sitting with relatives, and a gentleman stood here as racist as he could say. And the two things that came out of his mouth was, I'm from North Lakeland, and then Mexicans are building my house. <coughs> it's all messed up. No, no one on this board stops. You know, so they can't stop talking to you. That's fine. Two other things. Mr. Horn, I've spoken to you before. I thank you for doing what you did the other day. Thank you. Okay. Second off, I spoke with my 70 year old father. I said, Do you think you should stop paying for Kirby? He said, What do you mean? I said, You're a senior citizen. And he said, Well, let me ask you this. He said, Is my community my responsibility, or is it just the people that are under 65's responsibility? You know what I say to that? I don't care how old you are. You want to pay what I pay. If you don't want to pay, then you don't get the services that I get. What gives anyone the right at a certain age to go, you know what, I no longer should care about my community because I'm 65. And I hear it all the time, oh, you got kids. No, I don't have any kids. Actually, I do have kids, but it's 26. Heard Arlington's a great school. No, it's not. You heard it from me. Arlington school is not a good school. It never has been. Don't like it, we'll debate it. <coughs> and then I'm going to pull out the fact that they changed more grades than any other school in the city or any county during the grade changing system. <coughs> Why'd they do that? And then they lost all the paperwork. Bottom line is, Arlington is what you make it. Everyone voted to move to our own system. <coughs> We're going to have our own system. Because we want control. Someone used that very word the other day, control, right? Well, that's hogwash. We get it back to the county, and we'll lower it all back down to where it was. Then we'll see where the city goes from there. The bottom line is either you want control or you don't. I didn't vote, I have two schools. I voted to have every one of them. Where I stand is where the tax needs to go to build this building. I don't have any kids, any grandkids, or anyone that will go anywhere in any of these schools not rich by any means. Well, my priorities are the kids in this community. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Jay. Um, just want to clarify one thing. The gentleman that spoke and made those comments, I do not in any way agree with what he said. But he's not from North Lakeland. He's from right over here, just north of Highway 70. Just want to clarify that. <coughs> I appreciate you coming up and bringing that up. Thank you. Uh, Tim Roberts. Well, again, I'm Tim Roberts, 
1136 Blackwood. I'm a pro high school now person. And uh, once again, I'd like to say thanks to all of y'all for being right in the middle of this. And this doesn't have anything to do with the high school that's going to continue the last comment. Tuesday night, a speaker used language that was disparaging of an entire race and a specific country of origin group of people. While there's room for freedom of speech, possibly for part of all of it, I'm sorry, for part of this speech, or possibly all of it, it's still an embarrassment to this community. And I would like for the, this group here to make a formal statement somewhere or other that condemns that and discourages that from occurring again. This is an embarrassment. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll be the first to say I don't condone that kind of language in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I believe in full diversity. Uh, I've worked it and lived it in my career uh, 36 years, and I, too, was as surprised as you were. But by the time it was said, um, he was pretty much finished up. Yeah, I believe he said it twice. But uh, I'll let the first one slide, and by the second one, it was already over. So I'll let you make a statement if you know, I'd right. like to. Thank you. Um, as you guys know, I'm in landscaping. I use, I use every color in the rainbow for workers. Um, so I was really trying to hold myself back there when he was speaking about that. Um, yeah, to insult Latinos, it's like, well, just give up on produce at Kroger and give up on roofing and construction because the last 20 years, that's, a lot of nations been run by uh, Latinos. Uh, they're hard workers. They run circles around most of us, to be honestly. So, um, uh, part of me feels guilty for not speaking up that uh, Tuesday night. For, but part of me was like, well, let the men speak and let everyone have their say. But I just want to let everyone know that's, that's where I stand on that. Um, thank you. Anybody else? I believe this board all feels the same way. I don't believe anyone up here would condone that kind of uh, language, and we would encourage anyone that thinks they might want to slip up and say something like that to have second thought before you come up to speak. So, thank you, Tim. I appreciate that. Uh, Andrew Mills.
said, I want to offer, or he said he would offer a compromise in the form of leaning 60% away from the way he felt. Getting, in other words, I don't know how you describe that correctly, but he was leaning more towards the others than himself. And in that same meeting, Mr. Gonzalez said, I'm so concerned about the situation on the board and in the city, and I want to say that we need to unite, and that if we keep being divisive, that I think this uh, fissure, I think is the way you put it, will, will become irreparable. And uh, in the whole frame of what I just said, I'd like to say that it was a great man. His face is on Mount Rushmore. And at one time in our great nation's history, he united the country. And he himself said that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Next, uh, we have Linda Miller. Thank you, Commissioners. I'm here again. Um, Linda Miller, 3217 Seaway Lane, Sterling Place in Lakeland. Um, something else I wanted to discuss and try and find out, too. Three <coughs> members of the Commissioners, Norman Dow and Wright, want the school right now. But common sense tells me to wait till we can pay some of our debt down and not also paying the $5 million in penalties. Am I correct in that? That there's, there's going to be a penalty of $5 million if we do this right now? Um, people say, well, what about the construction costs? As it was figured out by somebody a lot smarter than I am, construction costs go up about 4.5% a year, which is a heck of a lot less than the huge interest rate we're going to pay on these loans and the penalties. I just want to know what is the reason that Mr. Roman, Ms. Dial, Mr. Wright want it right now? Because I'm, I'm thinking it's not common sense. It, to me, it's not any common sense at all. Is there something in it for you? Mr. Mr. Roman, are you getting money on the table? I don't know. It's a question. I second your second. Well, I'm, that's too bad. I just found out that the change. I second the objection. Well, I third it. I want to say it. I want to say it. I make a motion for a recess.
compliments and applause and things to yourself, and everyone will get a chance to be heard. Um, next, uh, Jerry Rushing. I've been in here before. I live at 3717 Monroe Road, uh, which is behind where the factory on the mall used to be. I've come in before and complained about the water drainage system that the mall has. Someone today, I think they had something to do with the construction at the mall facility, came out the back entrance and dumped them on the gravel, blocking the ditch coming out the back of the mall. The way they did that, they didn't block it to keep it from coming out of the pipe from the ball parking lot. They just did it to block the ditch. And I'm afraid we have a pretty good rain. It's just going to flow right over that, and it's going to come out into the road and cause problems out there in Detroit. Anybody knows the area, it's right in the curve. <coughs> so that's the reason I came to there are that many people here. <laughs> 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 They're all concerned about gravity. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get off the subjects. But, uh, that was my complaint for the night. And I'm still concerned about the drainage. It goes into the, into the lake itself. Right. I, mean, I don't understand why they don't pick up on this. Because it looks as dark as this. When it rains, it looks as dark as this pedestal. Just keep going. But anyway, thank you. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. 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 I saw Shane yeah. write that down too, so uh -huh. we definitely appreciate it. Uh -huh. Thank, thank you, Jerry. Thank you. All right, uh, Kevin Biggs. My name's Kevin Biggs. Uh, I live at 65, 26 Palomino. Um, I came here tonight. I, I spoke to you today. I just come here to speak again tonight. Um, on the, the tax thing, the high school thing. And, uh, I see people wanting it. You know, I'm not against school. You know, I got four kids, uh, three of them in uh, Arlington right now. Um, but I haven't seen any numbers. You know, I haven't seen anything. I, I know, and I know it's one, two, three that wants it. Two of them don't. We, we voted in uh, uh, Mayor Cunningham. Uh, kind of a referendum against Mayor Bunker because he was pushing it through very hard for the high school. He pushed it through for the for the middle school and everything. So it was kind of a, a referendum to get him in and Mr. Gonzalez also. But I haven't seen any numbers. There's nothing, you know, I hear, hear Mr. Wright say, you know, well, the, the schools are overcrowded. And when you were running the office, you said the schools in Arlington were overcrowded. I haven't seen any numbers that break it down to how many Lakeland students or how many Arlington schools are really in the school because it's an open school district. It is full. They optimize their space. They, they pull kids in from everywhere. So it is full, but it, and it's intentionally to be full, but it's not full of our kids. So I'm trying to find out where, where we're getting this need for, we didn't need the middle school, this need for the high school. But people have spoken. They've spoken. When uh, hiring Mr. Cunningham, Mr. Gonzalez, they spoke when they did the 60 40 split for the bond. The people have spoke over and over. Did you want this? You just want this? And I mean, we, we, what we need more here is not high school. We need representatives of the integrity. Mm -hmm. People that will stand for the right, even though it might not be what they want. If they're saying what was wrong, or what the people really want, we're here, you're our representatives. We want y'all to do what we ask. Not what you have them you particularly may want or like. I don't get to do everything I like to do. I have a boss. He tells me what to do. Might not be what I necessarily want to do. But I follow his lead. I just ask that you to follow the people's lead. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Next, uh, Blue Melt. Welcome. 
Blue Mountain, 9584 Pine Point Drive. I've got a speech prepared. There's just one thing I'd like to add before my speech. Someone earlier, I don't want to get into an argument with them, but made the statement that Arlington High School was not a good school. That may very well have happened to him. I don't need you to say the smart aleck comment. Sue me. Let's keep the comments to the board. Um, that may have been an unfortunate case for him. I just want to say that there are plenty of young adults in Lakeland that have attended Arlington High School, have a successful life and career. It's not the case. This is about Lakeland building a high school. This is not about bashing Arlington. Um, and then I'll go on with my prepared speech. It's deja vu. Here we are once again trying to rush financing for a high school. The city of Lakeland has wasted so much money just trying to avoid a vote from the very citizens that are going to pay for this. A vote. How can you justify wasting this kind of money just to avoid a vote? Yet here we are with a repeat performance. We're discussing using another costly funding mechanism, capital outlay notes, 12-year notes. They're not designed for a 30-year school. Most other municipalities use general obligation bonds. Hadn't we learned anything as a city from our mistakes from 2015? The financial director, Kyle Wright, who was previously employed by PFM that we just now voted on Tuesday night to use as a consulting firm, stated that the tax increase would be needed for each one of these funding mechanisms. He also stated the caveat that additional projects would require an additional tax increase. Let that sink in. Vice Mayor Roman, you got so upset and were so disrespectful to the city manager right here that night over the presentation. You did not want the budget considered or even mentioned. Vice Mayor Roman did not mention the funds that would be needed for projects that we've got in the pipeline and that we're going to need to fund. Wesley and Michelle, y'all sat right there and didn't even ask him a single question about his presentation. That leads me with nothing but to determine that that's an acceptable financial practice to y'all. You go make a personal, long commitment, a large commitment, and you don't even consider A, your budget, B, your ability to pay it, and C, what you've got coming up in your own life in the next couple of years that you're going to have to find. That's a recipe for financial disaster. You've got a fiduciary relationship to every one of these citizens in here and in the city. Every last one of you does. And I still can't believe that the superintendent of schools has not shared an operating budget with us. That's mind blowing. You can go to his office and you can review it if you want to, but you gotta make an appointment. You can't take anything and leave with it. How do we know? How do we know that y'all can run this school and how much money it's going to take? And that you can successfully do it? What kind of presentation and policy is that? How much responsibility is that? Meanwhile, all the talk is about Blakeland's plans. 
we're going to roll the school in one grade at a time. All of our intentions, and nobody's talking to Arlington. This is going to be like a divorce. It's going to be like a breakup of a partnership, of a business partnership. So how can you be representing all the families and the kids if you're not even working together with Arlington and planning this? You are elected to represent all the people, not just with your vision. And the division in this town is much greater than you realize, although I think you got a glimpse of it Tuesday night. Is this how you want your parents to be treated? Ignore them? Not giving them a voice? Not giving them a vote? Forcing them to sell and move to their, out of their homes that they've lived here for years because they can't afford the tax increase? That tax freeze that was up on the board there? It's a joke. I challenge any of y'all to try and live in Lakeland on nineteen to twenty thousand dollars a year, especially on Medicare. We cannot solve this problem by repeating the same past mistakes and forcing this down the throats and avoiding a vote a vote to these people is not going to heal the city. So why not put this to a vote and then honor the vote of the people regardless of whatever it is. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. Um, Karen Parsley. Okay. We put out a recommendation to hire a resolution to hire public financial manager and corporate. Okay. okay. Are they the same ones that did the projections for the middle school? How close were their projections? What actually occurred? Or I guess the income that we made, how is it? Is it paralleling with what they said it would, or is it higher or lower? I feel like you're talking to me. Anybody. <laughs> but if you want, uh, I don't mind. Yeah, you have some. Well, I hate to do that because then I forget what I've asked you and I don't know where to write down answers. So I said, um, if you if you know. It wasn't, the school wasn't on the agenda, so I didn't bring anything tonight to discuss. Okay, it. so you really can't answer that. Anyway, all right, and, and it just kind of, I, I did not know that Kyle was with him for seven years before he came to us. And it just kind of seems just like, okay, we didn't like yours, but we might like those. <laughs> So I just wondered how we went with the same company that our finance officer is from. You know, I think their their things would be pretty parallel, or it seems like it would be. Um, one thing that concerns me is, of course, the Lake District, Lake and Commons. We hope that these are all going to come to fruition. We we pray every night that they will. But right now, we still, do we have any building permits for either of those, or are we still just on site working? Lakeland, Lakeland Commons is under, I mean, Lakeland Commons, we haven't had any um, um, construction plans submitted. Oh, okay. They, um, they are supposed to be submitting, I think, it's March or April okay. for phase one. The Lake District is under a land disturbance permit right now. Um, they are working on construction plans, but it's going to be several months. Um, that's just for infrastructure, so road, sewer, um, and then individual site plans will come forward after that. So it's still a way to we'll see what like, an actual building permit. And I think, you know, it, it's hard to use those things as a good part of our financial if we don't have concrete force. And um, so I said, I just, you know, want to know, you know, what we're, who's going to be responsible for providing PFM with the 
figures that they're going to need to do the math to say whether we are financially able to do this without a huge tax Who will be providing? Yeah. I was going to say that you're exactly right. Uh, Mr. Wright was with BFF for seven years, and I'm sure he would be a great person to help us with this process. Um, however, you saw a glimpse a few weeks ago when I did when, or when, did, the, when he did his presentation that you know when we're sitting on the opposite sides of the table and we're debating on which parameters to use, sometimes the you know the conversation is going to get uh, passionate. It's going to get you know I disagree with that or, or you know so. What I'm, well, I like the idea of us being on the same side of the table and having them, you know, more or less being able to advise us on how the conversation should go with PFM, uh, being able to bounce numbers off of each other, look at different parameters. And so uh, I requested PFM and didn't get any feedback from anybody else that we should do a different direction, um, mainly for the, for the fact that we could kind of all be on the same side of the table as opposed to being well, yeah, I said I, I think the common person, we can look at both of the figures and like I said, the only time that I would love to have a comparison, I'd like to see both in light you know, so that we can have a comparison of what your presentation was and what kind of was. Um, it just seems to me that, yes, we can move ahead with finding out about financials, but then we need to see if all of the citizens are willing to take on the financial work, whatever it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, we have two more. John Burnett. <laughs> My name is John Burnett. I live at 9505 Pleasant Ridge Road. <clears throat> and uh, back in 2004, uh, the citizens of what is now known as North Lakeland, which was at the time uh, the um, Agricultural Reserve uh, Annexation Area of Lakeland, uh, the uh, mayor and the board of commissioners <coughs> uh, at one of our uh, little meetings uh, presented an idea that uh, they would like for us to join Lakeland. <coughs> at the time, uh, the city of Memphis was uh, in its land grab uh, mode and uh, they were annexing um, uh, all sorts of areas outside of Memphis and uh, the uh, mayor and board uh, convinced us that uh, there was a good possibility that the city of Memphis could actually annex uh, on the other side of Lakeland. And so uh, they said, now look, <clears throat> we don't have taxes. We're never going to have taxes. We're never going to have street lights. We are a little little town. We like it like this, like this, and you're not ever going to have to pay any taxes. So, <clears throat> if that uh, the gentleman who was sitting next to me uh, said, um, why, did, why did Lakeland annex you anyway? I said, well, because uh, we voted in a vote uh, to join Lakeland. Now, uh, we've had a couple of votes that have been very telling of our uh, community's uh, response in regards to uh, property taxes. We were told we weren't going to have property taxes, and yet property taxes have been creeping up and up and up. Um, the fact that the fact that when we were given the opportunity to vote, we voted as a city, and the majority of the citizens voted not to uh, go into debt with a bond issuance. And so we thought that was the end of that, but all of a sudden there was a runaround and all of a sudden we came up with the debt that we have facing us now. Uh, we had a vote here just recently 
where we voted out the mayor who was, uh, you know, in our opinion, a tax and spend kind of a guy. And uh, those two events, when you let the citizens vote, uh, if you let the citizens vote, you'll find that the majority of the citizens of Lakeland don't want any more debt, don't want any more taxes, and are very happy with uh, our partnership with uh, the Arlington School District. And so uh, that's my comment. Thank you, John. Mr. Mayor, may I ask a question? Sure. Mr. Burnett. Yes. I'm just curious, you have a pretty good pulse on Lakeland, on, on, on North Lakeland. Do you think that if there was a vote for de-annexation, you would vote for it? Yes. All right, I have one last card, and I don't necessarily know if I see him here anymore. It's Perry Farrell. Okay, because I just want to make sure I called the handsome Perry Farrell. <laughs> I figured we all needed a laugh, so he did. He put handsome Perry Farrell. Okay, let's. Uh, okay, we've heard the passion on both sides. For those of you who who worked hard for a high school, I get it. I understand what you want. But I also understand what a majority of the voters have said in the various elections in Lake. So I am I'm pleading with the, the folks who want a high school to work with the mayor on this compromise. And, and I know the folks who voted to support the mayor and me will support a compromise to get behind this and move on. There are other things we need to do in the city. And I'll say it again tonight, this, the divide is terrible. And, and if one side gets their way or the other side gets their way, this city will never heal. Never. So please, when you go home tonight, think about your position. Think about what, what's important to you. But think about, you just remember, there's a path forward as a city that we can resolve this issue. We can set some milestones and we can Make things happen in Liverpool. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to stick to the agenda, but I thought I'd just say a few quick things. Um, Tuesday night was not about passing a tax increase, it's about seeking financial counsel. There's a lot of people uh, asking, what, you know, what about this $2 or something tax increase? And I'm not, I mean, I, in my mind, I have, I have a ceiling, it's not north of $2 by any stretch of the imagination. So I just want people to stop passing that around. Whatever it's 239, 289, 279, whatever that is. That's not something I would whatever is being passed around, stop going north of two dollars. And my ceiling's below two dollars, by the way, but I'm just saying stop going passing that around because that's all it's doing is scaring people. Um, I'm a I'm a rational person. I would not go that far up. <coughs> just let's just put that that, that way, okay. Um, we're not trying to evict retired citizens. That's, I'm, I mean, I know some people are thinking we just we just don't care about people who are retired. My folks are retired too. I mean, I'm 39. I'm not 19. So it's like just consider that. I understand um, people on limited income. They're living off the pension. Uh, they don't have a, a job that keeps that money continuously flowing. I, I understand that. So I just want you to understand we're not just dismissing that. Um, uh, also, I want people to understand our superintendent has presented a lot of numbers. He's he's the PowerPoint master. He, things are online. I know Lakeland Currents has it. I believe the school board site uh, has it as well. If it's not on Facebook, it's accessible through the city site. There's, there's numbers out there. I presented some as well, and I was simply the conduit of information. I was not making up data from my end. I was just relaying it putting it all out there for people to see uh, from different um, vantage points, from city hall numbers to school board numbers. So there's information that's been presented. Um, also, one last thing. Um, I think people misunderstand what the bond vote was. Um, 
I was not on the DOC, but I remember in writing, before there was a vote on the bond, several commissioners said, there's still going to be a tax increase. The vote, the vote, I'm sorry if you feel like you're misled, and that may be something that uh, we need to be more clear about, whether it's putting out a newsletter <coughs> once a month that goes into your mailbox, which I think would be a great idea to spread information clearly to everyone. But the bond vote, the bond vote was for a bond, not for on a tax. That, that was a separate matter. Just, uh, just letting you guys know. Thank you. Thank you, Wesley. Um, let's move on to the agenda. We do have some things we need to get to accomplished tonight. <coughs> um, any sewer commission business? Um, let's move on to the consent agenda. Madam Reporter, if you would please read what we had on the consent agenda. Item number one, approval of meeting minutes on previous meeting. Your board meeting minutes, January 10th, 2019. B, regular meeting minutes, January 10th, 2019. C, special meeting minutes, January 17th, 2019. Item number two, resolution approved a contract with Eastwood LLC for FY19 Sanitary Sewer Improvement Projects. Three, resolution approving a final plan for Kensington Manor Plan Development. Four, resolution adopting the 2018 through 2020 budget calendar. All right. Uh Follow Monday. Monday's fine. I'll be back Monday. Okay. Uh, I just did the 
Okay, so we uh, we are contemplating moving the 15th uh, the budget revision submitted to the Board of Commissioners <coughs> on the 18th, which time the budget review by the Board of Commissioners would commence. And um, the following budget workshop originally scheduled for the 23rd of March, I believe uh, that's a Saturday. I don't <coughs> imagine that anybody wants to talk about budgets on a Saturday. So um, we are contemplating moving that day to the 25th. Um, and that particular, that's the second session. So that particular se session will just be us uh, detailing to you guys whatever revisions you wanted to see in the budget and reflecting those revisions to make sure that you are satisfied with um, those revisions and corrections being made to the budget. I don't anticipate that particular process taking too long. Um, so um, my, my uh, selection was uh, Monday, March 25th or uh, Tuesday, March 26th, and one of those days, whichever one we don't choose, could be our backup day. Is there any strong objection to either of those days? That would be hours after business hours. Correct. Yeah. Most likely 5.30. Then not. Uh, <laughs> quick, quick question. Yes, um, are we doing a, in this process, that this is my first time, do we do a line, a line, a line item? That's up to the discretion of the board. I would, I would imagine the, uh, so if I could just back up a little bit, um, the, the original workshop, the first workshop was the one that I planned where we would have the uh, department heads come in and, and deliver um, budget narratives and explain, you know, line item 41500, object 233 or whatever is, you know, sewer uniforms and it's because people need uniforms, something to that effect. We actually go through specific line items and understand what their purpose is. I will anticipate that that meeting will be extremely long. Uh, my preference would be that we split it over two days. Uh, I would prefer the 4th and the 5th of March, which is a Monday and a Tuesday. Of course, there is a work session, I believe, on the 7th of March. Um, so that may be a lot, but the alternative is to do it on a Saturday. And, uh, you bring the beer. We <laughs> <laughs> keep you guys loose while we're going through the beer action. <laughs> so, um, are there any objections to the fourth or fifth, or most likely both? Uh, I think I'll confirm with Shane, and we'll try and get a schedule together.
um, okay, so realistically, we could condense the two budget workshops into one budget workshop um, and just make that workshop on the 25th and the 26th of March the extensive workshop where we go line item by line item and all additional. Uh, all additional um, revisions will be done maybe via email or through printed copies, uh, and you can uh, do it that way. Uh, I'll defer to the board and to Shane to give me some clarity and if that's the preference. <coughs> Sounds good to me. 25th, 26th. Okay. Yes. I will eliminate the original budget workshop on the 4th and 5th. Eliminate the budget revision line item. Uh, <coughs> no Saturday, March 2nd. Correct. So, what's likely going to happen is that the board will receive uh, what I'm going to do is to uh, how about this? Budget review where we, so this, we being the uh, department heads and the finance department will uh, submit the budget worksheets and the budget narratives to the Board of Commissioners on the 1st of March. That is a Friday. Friday. I'll tell you what, let's make that the 4th of March. <coughs> and then the commissioners will have from the 25th to the, excuse me, from the 4th of March to the 25th of March to review the budgets, ask any questions they may have, perhaps uh, suggest um, revisions during that process, and then on the 25th when we come before you, um, we can be able to, we'll be able to provide some, uh, some indication of what the revised budget will look like. Is that fair for everybody? Yes. Fair enough. I will uh, mark up my copy that I saved, so I will uh, <laughs> Edit this and send it back around <coughs> shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think we should have set it as the first of March. Yes. Yeah. Accept it as discussed. I do believe. I mean, as far as the process is concerned, I'm not sure, but I'm willing to. <laughs> Mark this final, revise it, and send it back out. I, I don't know if that's appropriate. We'll just mark it up and we'll reintroduce that back to our fourth session. Okay. So we'll just, we'll just defer that to Mark. Yeah. Sounds good. Oh, that's right. That's right. We got Thank you, Mr. 
Kevin, would you like to speak to that? I think we have a paper ballot that was handed to us. Mind if we take three, four, and five together, seeing how we only have one ballot? Right. Absolutely. If you would go ahead and read resolution three, four, and five, we'll do this all at one time just to have one cheat. I'm sorry, two, three, and four. You're right. Two, three, and four. Okay. <coughs> two. One in a member two cards and regulation board. Matt three. Resolution appointing members to the board of appeals. Stormwater Board of Appeals. Four, resolution appointing members to the Economic Development Commission, Industrial <coughs> Development Bureau. All right, Mr. Parsons, is there anything you want to just work session? I would just say we do have a few candidates here. If you'd like to hear from any one of them, um, certainly, certainly can bring them forward. Anyone that's a uh, candidate for any of the boards like to come up and speak, uh, you can have the board.
Jeremy is a man of integrity and I trust his background as well. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coleman wants to speak. Zachary Coleman, 9162 Fletcher Trace Parkway. Um, I'm applying for both the Board of Appeals uh, and or uh, I suppose the uh, Economic Development Commission Industrial Development Board. Uh, I have a uh, I applied primarily to the uh, Board of Appeals primarily because I have a background in law. I'm a law student. I graduate in May, so I have less than 90 days until that. I did not count down or anything. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I think it's, it's less than that. Um, but I don't have a number. Um, but I took a class this past semester in land use and uh, land use regulations development uh, of businesses and areas and uh, accepting and critical variances and things that go into that. Um, you know, coming out of that class, I was like, well, I'll never use this. Uh, and then I saw there's an opening on the Board of Appeals and uh, I thought, you know, I want to serve my city. I want to help, uh, you know, help in any way I can. And so let's see if I can apply this knowledge. Um, and so that, that's the main reason why I'm interested in the Board of Appeals. Uh, as far as the Economic Development Commission and the Industrial Development Board, um, I, you know, like I mentioned, I'm a law student. Um, I noticed that there's 15 office spaces that are supposed to be a, as a part of the, uh, the Lake District when it's completed. Um, and the Lake District is a unique opportunity um, for legal offices uh, because uh, within a 40, 45 minute drive, you get four, um, you, you get four county courthouses. Um, and, you know, you typically practice in more than one court. Uh, Court. Um, and you know, with my connection with the young uh, legal community, I think that would be a, a huge asset, especially as legal continues to expand and grow. And I think it provides some good input um, as to what the younger the generation of uh, people who are investing in cities want. Um, so with that, I have to give you the same questions. If you don't respond to the uh, same, you know, same thing I said to uh, Jerry, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, definitely. So I, I do believe that you know the taxpayers' money is uh, like, like some of them There's a fiduciary responsibility there that uh, we have to you know evaluate opportunities um, and, and look you know not just what's on the paper but at the people behind the paper and, and determining whether those you know, those plans are, are good plans and whether those people who have those plans can carry out those plans effectively and be successful with it. Um, and so in any you know position, I would make sure that we were. Uh, allocate resources in a fiduciary capacity and the best interest of our citizens. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks, Zachary. Anyone else would like to come up and speak? <coughs> Keith Afton, 1126 Oak Sea Lane, calling for the EDC IDP board. First, uh, Commissioner Gonzalez, to answer your question. I do take it very seriously. It's, uh, it's our fiduciary responsibility that Zach alluded to to handle all the monies that are presented to us uh, very carefully. So I'm re upping for my position. I'm uh, excited about what we've done and what we can continue to do here. So, any questions? I'm, I'm not a public speaker. <laughs> so. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. You answered my question. I just, you know, we're, we're just concerned. No doubt about that. After we saw what happened down the road. I know y'all have a big thing. No. That big, it might be like this. But it's just, you know, we, I don't know if y'all are. We, and we, we've been working with some great folks. Dex Mulder, is, um, he's been wonderful to work with. I you know, had an opportunity to work with Shane and uh, Boris here, just here briefly, but we're, uh, you know, I think we've got some great opportunities in this town. Also, we've got a, we've got a, we've got a key subject that's uh, out there that, obviously it's bottom of town so from that I think there's a lot to grow upon. Now I might not be able to tie a bow tie like Jeremy uh, <laughs> but I uh, feel like you you got some great people before you uh, I just know what I can do and I'll be glad to do it again. So. Thank you Keith. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it. Anyone else?
members have any um, recommendations uh, that, that if you're a liaison to the board and you want to make a recommendation, I think that's perfectly acceptable. Um, from the Parks and, Parks and Rec perspective, I think I mentioned last time after our last meeting um, that we are looking for someone who is sports oriented since all of our sports programs are growing and developing and um, are part of a revenue base that we would like to use to reinvest into parks and rec that um, Chad Reynolds would be a wonderful addition to our board. I was going to mention uh, for the Board of Appeals, Brian McDaniel is currently on it. He's, that's his background. I mean, he's, he's an employee of HBA, but um, so he's, uh, I think it'd be good to just continue and make their be the recognition. Brian just being partner. Oh, that's right. That was awesome. EDC, IDB, um, you know, Keith and Jeremy just spoke. Um, their backgrounds are uh, fit right into that, uh, that those boards, the, the board, EDC, IDB. All right. The, that is the first discussion. We'll go ahead as a board and, and vote. Pass those up and we'll let the Madam Reporter and tally it up and let us know who will be helping us out. Uh, so the first one has three appointments, the second one has two, and there's one for the last. So we'll make sure that I'm over check. All right, everybody.
say, uh, I probably should have said this when we had a big crowd. Happy Valentine's Day to all the ladies out there in the city of Lakeland. Apologize that you're spending your Valentine's Day here with us, but hopefully it's informative. And you love Lakeland, right? So. <laughs>
cost for Memphis right now is uh, fifty thousand plus. Depends on how you how you're hired. Whereas here, if you start off with no qualifications whatsoever, and depending on what the level of fire department you want to be, uh, whether it be EMT, paramedic, etc., the money goes up. But typically, you start around fifty grand before you really consider the fire. Thank you. My concern is that uh, we know what we know what the fire station costs, we know what the truck costs, we know what, we know what it costs to hire the people. You know what it's going to cost to do a pen all the overhead, but this the soft cost out there of, of a turnover is something I don't think we consider, and that's a real cost because uh, I can let the Germantown Germantown Fire Department went to Memphis, and uh, again I was you know I, just, I called it a farm club for the uh, for the big fire departments, so I would I really urge our urge the fellow commissioners to. Uh, Moving on to the uh, resolution that would uh, eliminate the uh, fire department issue all go for now. <coughs> Years down the road, we can take it up again. Thank you. Any further discussion on this first resolution? Sure. I would just say that uh, I'm kind of tired. I'd like to debate this another day, but I would like the uh, six month extension uh, from what we have seen in the reports. There's a uh, almost nine hundred thousand dollar profit. Uh, some people debated that. We can debate that other days. Um, <coughs> like a six month extension, because without the six month extension, that means that we start July one, and we need to, to get busy pretty quickly. Um, so anyway, I'm for the extension. Any further discussion? I'm going to just make a statement here. Obviously, everyone knows how I feel about this subject as well. I'm very well ingrained in uh, what it takes to do a fire department uh, just from a general uh, situation with uh, city and county services. Uh, I know all the hidden costs and the back end things. Uh, I have a relative who manages fleet services for Shelby County. And I can tell you folks, fire trucks aren't cheap to maintain. They're not cheap to keep ISO ratings on. And they're very, very expensive. When you go into the fire business, you spend money. And when you're done spending money, you spend more money. And we can sit here all night and debate on apples and oranges and whether we're going to save $900,000. I believe that was pretty much uh, set straight during the campaign. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that are ready to get this behind us and to dissolve this resolution that will come up after this one. And let's move on to things that are more important to the citizens and to the children of this city, and it's not this fire department. So I would urge my fellow commissioners to vote this six-month extension down. Let's get this fire department behind us, and let's start focusing on things and healing the city. I think this is another item that will further divide us if we keep kicking this can down the road six months. We're going to get to six months from now, and we're not going to be ready, and we're going to see the full cost and finances necessary to do a fire department and it's going to greatly affect everything else we need to do. So from a financial standpoint, it's pretty obvious that money's tight. I think it's time to put this behind us completely right now. We can look at it down the road two, three years. Let's focus on what's important to everyone in the city. So with that, is there any other comments on the fire department? Ms. Ray, do you have access to those types of figures and um data that could be added in addition to the study that the Board of Commissioners was presented. I was not part of that. I was not part of the actual um, presentation of that. Would there be a way to, at least with this extension, provide those types of numbers so that we can all be, uh, you know, take, take into account considering to be the hidden costs, I'd really like to see those um, before we make a decision. Uh, I'd like to have the information that you have. I would, I would really like to hear that. Would you, would you or someone else who has, has done more research on this situation be able to provide those things for us? Well, absolutely, I can provide it. I okay. Mean, it's, just, you know, it's even just, if it's just for me or just for us, just for us to be able to take a look at at, at the things you're saying because I want to listen to you, I want to listen to your input, I want to be um, fully knowledgeable of everything that you have 
just um, said to us that we're not taking into account because I, those things are things that I have not had mentioned and I would like to um, be fully informed. Yeah, I can absolutely provide that. I, had I had a little foresight, okay, well, I would have had. Uh, sorry to tell you, spoke. I didn't. I would have had Chief Benson so come and speak again. He was here uh, at the last DOC meeting, and um, I know so he can speak. Really for, for for point of clarification, I would like to have the extension just to have that additional information to be provided for us, so that I'm fully knowledgeable on the whole entire situation of the things that you brought up since I heard um, since this issue was brought about during the campaign. I'm interested to know those things. Well, yes, you have a question. The only concern there is the county chief Benson who had to come and you can't keep you can't keep moving people around and waiting on them to see what Blackman's going to do. Uh, if we put it off six more months, that's just six more months that he's had, he has to uh, play the shell game with equipment people, okay, there are jobs involved here. So that's why it's another reason that I think, we, you know, I understand. Can, he, can he come and speak to that? He, he, he can, but you know, the more the more we delay it, you know, it, it's just, it's just, it's just so many moving parts here that we're looking at. And exactly. It, and if we, but if we, and we can debate the moving parts, but. Well, I'm not here to debate. I would know what I mean. We, we can talk, we can talk yeah, about it, discuss it among ourselves here in front of, front of all the folks, but, but he's under, he's under, he's telling us that we've got to move, we've got to, you know, we've got to do it or, or not do it. Um, and by putting the thing off for six months, this is going to be more problems for him and probably more animosity for Lakeland because we can't make a decision. Um, that's what I would urge us to just go ahead and move on. But we can always bring this thing up again when we have the money and we have more time to think about it. And that's what I'm asking my fellow commissioners to do. We've got a lot to do here. We spend a lot of time here, and, um, and I love it, but we're, we're wrapped around the axle on maybe one, one big issue. Put that behind us. Let's let the fire department go for now, and when we get our finances put together, and, Thanks for running smooth. We can come back and do it again. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not like we're, you know, we have to do it now. I think we'd be, we'd be far better off just saying, you know, it was a good idea, maybe, but we need some more time to think about it. And this is, this is terminate the, terminate the, uh, pass the resolution to put it behind us. And we'll come back another day. Put it off now doesn't mean that two or three years from now we'll come back and do it again. Make it more feasible then. It make more, more sense then when the Lake District starts pumping out revenue. And when the uh, Lincoln Commons starts pumping out revenue. And when all these houses start coming on board that we're hoping they'll come in here. So let's the urge my fellow commissioners to uh, look at the big picture. And uh, I know there's passion about the fire department. But for all the things we need, we need to do, uh, you know, we need to use our passion on is not the fire department right now. Let's let it go. Thank you. Yeah, so where, where I'm at right now is, you know, we all went to a seminar with MTAS. And the MTAS, um, Chief Wolf was highly respected there. I, they love him there. The MTAS is kind of like your guiding, um, Entity for many things uh, that we need to we, we, we seek their advice and wisdom on things because they're kind of they just know um, how things operate. So the chief Wolf presented some uh, several times he presented things to us that it made sense to me. So what I'm thinking is there would have to be something that presents similarly that would argue against it. That would be clear the numbers that could counter argue that. As Chief Wolf, being the expert in the state, um, it's kind of you know, he ran your town fire department. He's well respected in pass. He's the expert in the state. So if there are, if there is someone who's someone else who can, whether Chief Benson or someone else, who can give a reasonable uh, explanation that would show me how how Wolf is wrong, basically, because that's what we're saying. Um, 
then I would, you know, I'd listen to that. Five to ten more. Um, I'm not saying the chief wolf is wrong. I'm saying that it's just looking at the lake, it's not the time. Department, you know, he can he can build a fire department and, and, and nothing more. You know, we, we, we know we know he can build a fire department, but that's that's the least of his problems. His big problems built in this city to support. I know we talked about the eight hundred thousand, nine hundred thousand that we may be saving. You know, we may be that's a big number. And uh and that's what I'm looking at. You know, just to build it receive to do. I my question is but I question the building of our city at this time to take that on. I just kind of state the obvious, I apologize for saying that, but um, if we're not questioning Chief Wolf's expertise, then we have to accept that it's seven to nine hundred thousand, which is roughly a third of what you pay in your fire fee, um, is going to subsidize someplace else and that we may be able to build a possible second firehouse for that money, possibly one day lower a fee. Um, but the obvious thing that I want to state is that, you know, we've been arguing for six years now over a school. Six years over this school. And um, the difference in payment the first time was less than six, seven hundred thousand dollars And that was over the moon. There's no way that's such a huge amount of money. And now we're just willing to just give away seven to nine hundred thousand dollars in the fire department. It just doesn't add up or make sense to me. Yeah, for you. One last comment. The other thing. Bottom line is there was an election in November and the folks who voted voted overwhelmingly not to do that. And I think we need to honor that. Alright, I'll I'll finish up the comments here. Um I don't take anything away from Chief Wolf, a great man. I talked to him <clears throat> right after I was elected. I believe he saw the writing on the wall that this city is not financially ready to support its own fire department. And he chose to not retire from any task because of that. He knows the numbers. If he firmly could stand here before you today, he would tell you, Lakeland does not have the financial means to sustain a fire department, a one truck fire department. Because as we grow, as I have committed to every citizen in this town, every porch I stood on, we are going to grow this town commercially and residentially, which is going to require more fire service, which will require more money. I believe he was brought in under the pretense that he had an unlimited budget. And now he realizes that the money's not here. And we have other obligations that we need to be covering so that this city can grow. The fire department doesn't bring sewer systems in here. doesn't help us get our infrastructure put in place. This is something for down the road. It's a nice, shiny Christmas present one day with a bow on it. But right now, we cannot financially afford to do this and then sit here and debate and work on financing for a high school. It's that simple. You have to pick your poison and decide where you're going to focus your interest because we are not going to be financially able to do both. If you want to pick a fire department, fine. That's just going to make it that much harder to borrow the money for the school. It's that simple. Because I can assure you, I ran the numbers during my campaign. What we get in the savings is going to be spent out in contracted service for ambulance, for dispatch, and all of this kind of stuff. And we're fooling ourselves that we're going to say we're going to sit up here for another six months and come back with some new figures and new things. The data's been out there. This is foolish. We should not be doing it. We need to vote down this six-month extension. We need to rescind the fire department. And we need to move on to better and bigger things for this city so that we can start to heal. And with that, I will close the discussion. And Madam Recorder, if you would please read the vote on the first part of the resolution. Resolution approving a six-month extension regarding the Lakeland Fire Department. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Roman? Yes. Commissioner Dow? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? No. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Mayor Conrad? No.
no. That motion carries. Would you read the resolution below that one, please? Resolution rescinding resolution 2017-06-47. Do I have a motion to bring this to the floor? I'll second. The floor is open for discussion. Well, we've already said it all. I mean, all those we've said. I think the biggest fact that the voters said something, something differently to us says a lot about what we felt about the voters. I'm sorry, I'm just going to be in luck. The decision was made in the ballot box about this. So for us to be here wasting our time debating this is it, it's remarkable. I mean, I'm just, just I'm not being mean, I'm just going to let it go. Thank you. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's getting a little exhausting hearing about what we voted on. I mean, I was voted on, Commissioner Dye was voted on, Commissioner Wright was voted on, all of us were voted on. So to say, like, one vote is the be all end all. I mean, this is democracy. This is the reason why we have this setup, is because we have five. So I mean, I'm just going to, I just wanted to respectfully say that the whole <coughs> one vote is the be all end all. Yeah, we have yeah, four. I understand what you're saying, but um, it is, you said it, it is democracy indeed. It is democracy. And the people of the city spoke. And uh, this board is getting a bad reputation about ignoring what the people have to say. That's what they vote for. If they, you know, that's why we have elections. You know, I, I hate the term when I heard the first time, but the elections do have consequences. And the majority of the citizens in the city said no to a fire department. But yet, my fellow commissioners, well, I, don't know, I understand your positions, but I think it's just another another um, black eye for this board. We just do not follow the wishes of the people who put the bills for this city. And I wish here, we here. could reconsider yeah. that. Right, it's, let's, it's, let's it's, uh, like, yes, please, just please keep our comments quiet. But I'm just, I'm just disappointed. Of all the things that I thought that we could get done tonight, I thought we would put this to rest. And uh, I'm just disappointed. Thank you. Mayor Cunningham, I would, I, I respectfully would like to see that additional information to add to Chief Wolf's. Um, just as everyone else that doesn't want a school that wants to know the data that wants to know everything else about the school and the progression of this situation i would also like to see this additional information about the fire department and i don't see anything wrong with asking for additional information and i'm sorry if you do because that's what you're all asking for with the school I have the floor. <clears throat> I have the floor. Um, it's amazing to me that we can sit up here and we can talk about democracy. Democracy. And you won't let these people vote on how we spend their tax dollars. Yes, you're going to sit here and hold this ransom fire department that you know good and well, we cannot afford to do both a school and a fire department. It's that simple, folks. Democracy applies unabated <coughs> to everyone. So if you want to sit here and talk about democracy, give these people a chance to vote on the buff funding for the school. Does the fire fee go away if we fund a school? What do you mean by does the fire fee go away? It's two different subjects. It has nothing to do with each other. Money's money, and I will close my statement with that. And I would ask the Madam Recorder to please call the vote on this resolution to rescind the resolution from last year. Vice Mayor Wilson? No. Commissioner Dow? No. Commissioner Gonzalez? No.
Yes, ma'am, Madam Reporter. I'm sorry if I made that mistake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm saying versus the 
that's, that's yeah, not we had it's some. We had some, but this is so the difference between that is that was a TDOT managed project. This is a local programs project. So we do all of the the um, program management um, yeah. and make the decisions on um, the design and things like that. It still has to be ultimately approved by TDOT, but it gives us a lot more flexibility. Right, I, and I appreciate that part because we have. I was thinking to put together just a small committee of stakeholders, people that would be impacted from those neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Just a few small meetings where, hey, you guys have any recommendations. Um, um, if they have any other insight, you know, and as far as design or layout. I mean, obviously, the path is what it is. I'm not saying. Yeah, yeah. But the, kind the, of the, the intricate, details. intricate yeah. details, exactly. Yeah, sure. sure. We would, we would yeah. definitely welcome that. Um, I've not gotten the final plans up to wait till Broadway is, is concluded and utility coordination is concluded, and then I'll get a final set of plans. And then at that time, that would be you know appropriate for us to start picking out those final details. And that'd be later this year, probably, or early. Possibly. Yeah, Maybe. Possibly. Uh, yeah. More likely early next. But it could be early. Yeah. Could be this year. Could be. All right. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah, I have a question. Sure. I've always been told that we had to do this because it's passed from multiple boards to us. And I've always been told that this is something we had to do as a federal program and cost way too much money to, to just not do it. Have you, done, have you done those calculations of what it would cost us to not do it? Well, I'll have to look back. So everything that we have spent so far, mm -hmm. not us personally, but the project in total, so the 100% cost. We would have to reimburse to DOT and FHWA. So I have not gone back to look at what we've, we've spent, but um, I mean, it's it's substantial, several million dollars in right away acquisition <coughs> plus design and things but like we, that. So we own that land, right? We do own that land, but it was purchased for that. by, yeah, but 80% 80, 80 of the purchase was paid for by the federal government. We paid 20% of the purchase. Oh, I'm just curious. I like yeah. That. Okay. Yeah, I can come up with that number. Um, so another, Kind of another hitch in that is if a um, local government backs out of a project like this, um, even though we refund them, then there is um, you're sort of I don't want to say blacklisted, but but when you go to apply for more grants, federal grants, regardless of where it's coming from, then they are more um, hesitant because you tied up the money for um, 11 years now. So um, that is something to consider, but um, that is always an option. Or if the timeline is changes, so for if we decide, I mean, so for some reason there's a 2025 construction. I mean, this is just what I'm thinking. What just was going through my head right now? Because I've always been told, you know, your, your hands are tied on it, and I want to make sure that if our hands are tied. Our hands are tied, and we all know it. But if for some reason, we have flexibility to look at planning what it would cost, what it would cost. FHWA has sort of a rule of thumb. So they, if if the project goes longer than 12 months without a reimbursement request, which is how they make sure that the project is moving forward. If it goes longer than 12 months, then they start to consider the project inactive, and they start considering pulling those funds back. So that's that was what I, I believe when I came in, um, when I came back in, in 15, that's what I had um, notified the board, because we had, it had taken us a long time to get through right of way, and we were still putting in reimbursement requests. They want to see them really no longer than quarterly. Um, TDOT does an FHWA, but if it goes longer than 12 months, then um, it's a red flag to FHWA and they'll pull the money and put it somewhere else because it's competitive. Uh, you know, everybody's pulling for it. So that's, that's their kind of FHWA's tipping point is 12 months of no <laughs> payment reimbursement request. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Madam, the full group you. Excuse me, read item seven. <coughs> Discussion on negative security system on the table. Yeah, I'll be I'll be real quick. Uh, basically, we I talked a little bit last week. Um, there was a neighborhood at uh, HOA meeting um, uh, last. This is for another neighborhood, not mine. Uh, on Tuesday, and they they were discussing about adding a security camera, cellular based. So you don't have to worry about uh, if you need lines. Um, it was, they, they went over some details, and I've been in contact with people from Midtown and East Memphis discussing different options. Um, four of the things that are a big plus about having security is, is one, it's a crime deterrent, it's the obvious, crime, criminal apprehension and arrest, traffic speed control, and intersection safety. Um, it does help give us an extra layer beyond 
uh, let's say, neighborhood watch or Shelby County Sheriff. Uh, I think just adding that extra layer would be a, a big help uh, to our town. Um, when it says neighborhood security system, I would not talk about, I wouldn't be entertaining inside the neighborhood. I'd be entertaining uh, major thoroughfares and uh, entrances to neighborhoods so that you have the coming and going of traffic. So it's not something where you're spying on people, you're just watching public streets um, so that if something was to happen, you would have something you can go to um, because there have been incidents last year or the previous year before that where, man, we just had a camera. We could have gotten some things resolved a lot quicker or just had some resolution. Uh, so I think this is something I want to pursue. There are grants out there and it's something I'm going to look into. Uh, I've been looking into it, but I'm trying to dig deeper so that it doesn't involve much of our budget. It's more of a, something where the grant takes care of us whether it's 80, 20, or something along those lines. So just letting everyone know that that's one thing we're pursuing, um, 64 all the way up. Um, and it, hopefully it's something that we don't have to do piecemeal, but it all depends on what the, what the grant gives us. You know? So um, I'll just keep everyone informed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone <coughs> have any announcements? Hearing none, I'll entertain, <coughs> excuse me, a motion to adjourn. Move